I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to build our first groove using Pattern Sequencing and Drum Machine Designer. Now normally when we first select a software instrument in Logic, what we do is to go and find the instrument we want to use from the software instrument list. But Drum Machine Designer doesn't exist within that list. Let me show you what I mean. I've got a completely empty software instrument track here, and if I come over to the instrument uh, selection, I can come down through Logic's instruments, and I can look through this list, and I'm not going to find Drum Machine Designer. So where do I find it? Well, what I need to do is to open up Logic's library and to come into the electronic drum kits. And by making a selection here, what I'm going to be able to do is to then choose uh, or load Drum Machine Designer by default. What I'm actually going to do is to select um, a kit here called Birdland Courts. And when I do that, straight away, Drum Machine Designer is launched into the instrument strip up here at the top. And I can then see that there is a collection of other plugins through which this sound will pass. Now, anything that's grayed out, that's there in the list but not blue, is temporarily bypassed. It means that it's not actually going to have an effect on the sound, but it's there, ready to work if I want it to. And anything that's blue is already going to be uh, processing that sound in some way. So I can see that pedal board and the channel EQ are on, and therefore they're going to be affecting the sound of this kit. So what I've done now is to load Drum Machine Designer via the library, and now what I want to do is to make a pattern or a groove for this kit. So the way that I'm going to do that is to come over to the right-hand side here into the main page, and I'm going to control click next to um, the name of this track. And what I want to do is to create a pattern region. Now, the moment I do this, what Logic is going to create is a four bar sequence. And it's also going to open up the step sequencer down here at the bottom. And if I want to make this section a little bit larger, I can hover over the gap between the main page and the step sequencer and simply just drag up so it's occupying a bit more of the screen. Now, when I press play, What's going to happen straight away is we're going to see that the step sequencer is going to start cycling around the 16 steps that it's created so far. There it goes, so it's just looping around. But the reason why we can't hear any information yet is because we haven't programmed any individual hits into the various steps of the sequence. So let's do that next. What I'm actually going to do is to make sure that this loop never stops playing. I'm going to draw a little loop around it simply by dragging across those four bars above the actual bar numbers there. So now we've got a cycle and it's going to just keep playing around. So to assign a hit, all I have to do is to click somewhere in the grid. So if I click, uh, create a kick drum here, I can press play, and I can actually build a groove in real time. OK, now straight away, what I'm thinking is that I want this groove to be much slower. I'm going to take the tempo down, which I can do right up here at the top. So up here in the transport bar, I'm simply clicking on the tempo and taking it down. And also, I've got a couple of hits the wrong way around here. I want this kick drum to be here and this snare drum to be here. And you can see that simply by clicking on a note that's been assigned, I can turn it off. And by uh, clicking again on another one, I can switch them on and off from one step to another. Let's hear this groove now. OK, so we're up and we're running, and again, I can just press stop, and the step sequencer will stop. So part of the reason why I chose this individual kit is because in addition to the drum sounds, which we've started to program for, there is a bunch of individual sort of sampled sounds from pianos and from guitars and basses, which I can add to this individual groove. This kit contains more than just percussion instruments, in other words. So I've got a kick and snare here. And that's the sort of pattern that I've just programmed. But what I've also got is a bass sound. And these really nice little sort of sampled pianos, which are a bit dusty and a bit vinyl. So what I can now do is to start to thinking about sort of how to make my uh, pattern a bit more interesting, not just from a drum source point of view, but by adding some of these little sounds in as well. Let's do that next, starting with the bass.
So now I've got a much more interesting pattern, which hasn't just got drums in it, but it's got some pianos and a little bass line within it as well. Now up in the main page, I can see that I've got a four bar sequence here, but we're only actually hearing one bar, which is looping round and round and round. And the reason for that is because we've only got 16 steps within our sequence. What if I want to turn this pattern into a two bar pattern or even a four bar pattern? Well, the way that I can do that is over here on the right hand side. Having programmed 16 steps, what I'm going to do is to select here and come down to 32 steps. And what that will automatically do is to double the length of the pattern and it's going to copy the first 16 steps to the next 16 steps. So at the moment, I still have the same thing happening, but it's now happening over two bars rather than one. And what that means is that I could create some variation. Let's find one of these piano samples that I haven't used yet and we'll put it in at the end of the second bar. And what I'm also going to do is to put in a little snare variation there as well. So now we've got a two bar groove and if I were to do the same thing again and double the sequence length from 32 steps to 64, then now what I've got is a four bar groove. And again, now the first two bars have been copied into the second two bars so I can create another variation here at the end of bar four. That's working nicely. But what if I decide that actually the data that's working on one particular track of my step sequence isn't really working for me? I want to get rid of all of it. Does that mean that I have to click on every single individual note to erase it and to start again? Well, no. Actually, what I can do is to find the track that I want to delete or get rid of the data for, control click it, and from the drop down list that appears whenever I um, control click, what I can do is to clear that row. And what that will do is to get rid of all of the data on that track. And what that allows me to do is to do something else which is really useful within the step sequencer, which is to create multiple points in a sort of brushed style. So in other words, what I could do would be to say, right, actually I want a slightly busier hi-hat pattern in this first beat. So what I want to do is to create five notes in a row. I can click in the first slot, and simply just drag across to the right hand side. And then what I could do would be to go through and create individual points wherever I want them instead. So now I've got a different style of pattern. So that's working really nicely. And there are a couple of other things that are really great about working with step sequences as well. Having created this first pattern, what if I wanted an eight bar pattern instead of a four bar pattern? Well, I can see that I can't write a sequence that's longer than 64 steps. But what I can do is to come back to the arrange page and simply copy this to bar five. And what that is now doing is giving me a step sequence here, which is completely independent of this step sequence here. So in other words, I could come to the second sequence and what I could do would be to say, right, I'm going to drop out all of the pianos that are happening in the last couple of beats, take out the bass as well, and just come down to the kick and the snare pattern for the end of that version of the sequence. And now we've got an eight bar pattern. So what I've now got is a really nice sequence and I've layered two next to each other in order to create a longer version of the same thing. 
So what we've done within this video is to start working with Drum Machine Designer and the Step Sequencer, and they make a really powerful pairing. What we did was to start with a 16-step sequence, which produces one bar of beat. And what we then did was to take that up to 32 steps and then to 64, taking our original pattern from one bar to two to four. And then right at the end, what we've done is to copy that first sequence so that we've actually been able to take a four bar groove and make it an eight bar groove instead. And we can see that it's a really intuitive way of making beats because we can work in real time. We can add hits wherever we like. And if we do something we don't like, we can simply click on it and it disappears.